everyone, and welcome to another amazing episode of Uncourt Conversations. I'm your host, Crystal Garner, also known as KG, and I'm accompanied by my amazing, amazing co-host. I did the same thing again. My name is Chris Classic, and <laughs> apparently I'm struggling to open a bottle. <laughs> would, you like, would you like me to take over again? I think, I think this is the way to do it. Yeah, this is, like, <laughs> this is how we do it, okay? Perfect. Awesome. Um, so yeah, my name is Chris Classic, <laughs> that's Crystal Garner, and this is Uncorked Conversations. We have amazing guests today. Um, I think a part of having an uncorked conversation is to not do anything that's super traditional. Okay. So instead of introducing you, I'm going to allow you to introduce yourself so that I don't leave anything out. Oh, sure. I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi, you guys. My name is Kiana Watson. I am a real estate broker in the metro Atlanta area. I own my own real estate firm, Watson Realty Co., I also have an online training platform, Agent Tools for Success. I have a CEO membership, CEO society. And just overall, I am a married woman, but I am a boss, ambitious, goal-setting person. I'm so excited to have this uncourt conversation because I have a lot to say. It's a lot that happens behind running all these businesses and being a minor minority woman in business. So we're going to have a good conversation. Amen. I love awesome. it. Amen. Did you want some wine as I opened it? Well, well thank you. Everything. Absolutely. <laughs> Here you go. Well, I started it. I, you Jesus know, listen, Christ. We're a team. We're a thank team. You. Teamwork so makes much. the dream work. Here you go. Correct. I'll give you the bottle. Thank you. Because I got some Now I feel better. Thank you. <laughs> Brandon! Yes, yes, yes. Well, all right. Uh, I am, um, hello everyone. I am Brandon Sherman. Regional Vice President and Community Development Manager with Amerith Bank here in Atlanta, Georgia. And I have been in the finance service industry for 27 years now. And of course, I am known as the home loan guru. My biggest passion is helping people to create a sense of financial well-being so they can bank with ease and have the confidence to achieve their goals. And so right now, I'm all about cancel rent payments, hashtag cancel rent payments, trying to help as many people as I can to become homeowners, to realize that dream, and I'm excited to have this um, this conversation. I'm also one of the BMW influencers, so I'm happy Ooh. to be representing BMW, Scott. a proud BMW <laughs> owner for many years. All right. right. And so I'm excited to be here in fellowship with these great, great people. So excited to be here. And amazing. if you haven't noticed, we're at the amazing Fellowship ATL. If you have not been here yet, you need to get it on your radar. Pull up, actually pull up in your BMW. All right. So let's get a little bit into your stories, right? Just how did you even get here? Where did it all start from? Was this a childhood dream that you were like, hey, when I grow up, I'm going to be amazing AF. Like, where did it start? Tell us about your story. Ladies first. Well, for me, it didn't specifically start like anywhere. I think because I grew up in humble beginnings. I'm the second oldest of six kids. Mm -hmm. um, we grew up in the projects, the PJs. See? And from there, we kind of moved up because we, when you move up from there, it's like, oh, my gosh, my mom got Section 8. Now we got a house. Right. So that's like the biggest, like, that's what I grew up, how I grew up. But mm -hmm. I started to dream bigger. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that came from visiting Atlanta. I'm mm -hmm. from a small town, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Right. Okay. And I used to come here when I was in college. Um, we, they would have Luda Day weekend and mm -hmm. then, like, Diddy weekend. Yep. Freak and Nick. that was, <laughs> all, I, I wasn't around for Freak Nick, <laughs> but all those things. And when I would come, I would just see so many black people mm -hmm. doing great. Mm -hmm. And I always said when I got out of college, I was coming to Atlanta, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was going to do, right. but I knew I was coming here because in this city, I didn't see people struggling. Even yeah. they, maybe they were. Right. But what I saw, what I, I saw progression. Mm -hmm. So I came to Atlanta and this, that's how I started to really engrave myself with people that were successful with different mindset and that's what sparked me into who i am and where i am today mm -hmm. absolutely love really it good. and that's powerful you know this place just has a way of just grabbing you and owning you and making you feel home yeah i love it here i'm from new york city as well as chris from mm -hmm. new york city but you're from nola i'm from nolan no <laughs> Earlier he said it all the way different. Now, yeah, sure no, that, that was that was that was sure. the, the bank language. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. You know, you know what happened is my dad, my dad. Well, he God rest his soul. He was ninety when he passed away last year. Mm -hmm. But his generation says New Orleans. Mm. They don't say New Orleans. Like, mm -hmm. but the, the whole thing about New Orleans, we have lazy speech. It's right. all about being lazy, baby. Right. Like, baby. You know, <laughs> you know? So instead of saying a mortgage, we're gonna say a mortgage. You know, right. it's, it's right. very lazy, but. I'm born and raised in Orleans, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. I'm the youngest of four, mm -hmm. also from the projects. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how we have that same, mm -hmm. you know, story there, storyline. Mm -hmm. But 
grew up in poverty, but in a house of love. Right. Mm. You know what I mean? In, 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 in an environment where, you know, you can dream to become whatever you wanted to become. My mom always influenced me to become whatever I wanted to become. And um, there was this gentleman that would come to our house to, to sell life insurance for my mom. Mm. And he always had a suit on, mm -hmm. and his name was John. He was, he was a Caucasian gentleman. Mm -hmm. But he would come in the projects, and he mm -hmm. would, you know, go over her financial information with her. And that was the first spark I had mm -hmm. of saying, you know, I want to be that guy. I want to be that mm -hmm. guy that mm -hmm. can go into any environment and treat people with dignity. Right. And yeah. that's what hit me hard, I, and I would see that. And so I didn't know what I wanted to become when I grew up. I just knew I would have a suit on. Mm -hmm. I'd, be, I'd be smart, yeah. and I'd be intelligent, I'd be a go-getter. And fast forward, you know, many years, I'm doing that. And I didn't have a, a vision of coming to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. It was Hurricane Katrina that brought me here in 2005. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. So we lost everything to Hurricane Katrina in 2005, came here, and started over. So I started over. I was already a commercial in New Orleans, but had to come here and just start all over again. Went from Wachovia Bank to Bank of America to... BB&T, the PNC, the Fidelity Bank, and Fidelity wow. Bank became a marriage bank. So I've been in the game for 27 years. Right. Um, That's how old and so, I am. All right, okay. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just wanted to say that. <laughs> but, the, but overall, my passion is really my personal mission, mm -hmm. you know, helping people, restoring lives, and shaping the future. That's what's driving me. And, and it's all about helping somebody and helping people to see that there's a better way of doing your finances, better way of living life. So that's what's driving me. Do you think New Orleans and, and Hurricane Katrina contributed to that really identifying your purpose in life? It did. I mean, because what happened for me, I lost, I lost my title. I was, a, I was a, you know, second, you know, um, a, a guy that was close to the president of the bank in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And, and so I had, you know, the highest, you know, like, um, spending credit card for the bank and right. I did all kind of different things and flew here and flew there and mm -hmm. Hurricane Katrina happened and I came to Atlanta and no one knew me. Right. And wow. no one knew who I was. And right. it didn't matter what kind of education I had. It was like, you know, well, you know, starting from square one. Yeah. And so for me, I, I had to realize I wasn't my title. Yep. Mm. You know, so I had, to, I had to grab onto a mission. Mm. And so my mission is helping people restoring lives and shaping the future. Right. I use my title as just a backdrop to carry out the mission. So yeah. no matter what my title changes to, the mission is still the mission. Mm -hmm. And that's that. what drives me. I'm, I'm mission driven. Absolutely. Speaking of missions, what would you say currently uh, your, your, your biggest mission is now with what you do? My biggest mission is not to create a bunch of realtors or a bunch of people that want to be real estate brokers. I'm starting to recognize that representation of black women mm -hmm. in excellence and yes. luxury, um, living their lives out loud. That is my mission. I want us to know that we are limitless. Right. And whatever we want to accomplish, we can put our minds to it. First, I say pray, yeah. then get on your feet and work. Right. Yeah. But we can accomplish that. And I think so many times we diminish ourselves and we diminish that we can achieve these big goals and have big audacious goals because we look in the mirror and a lot of times society, they're not highlighting us in the best light. Right. So we, don't, we think, oh, they deserve to yeah. live that way. Mm -hmm. This other race deserves to drive that car. This other race deserves to buy that multi-million dollar property where mm -hmm. in essentially we all deserve that. Right. All so I want to represent women saying, listen, I'm going to go for it. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to get rich or die trying, right? right and right. 50 cent, success, being successful and having abundance is your birthright. Yes. <laughs> and we need to stop being so offended. I asked a question one time when I talk about luxury and I, I asked someone, does that make you uncomfortable? And they said, yes. Mm -hmm. I said, why does it make you uncomfortable? Because do you feel like you're not worthy of living a luxury life? Mm -hmm. And that made them question themselves. Mm -hmm. We have to start, start looking at black women as we are luxury and right. we yes. do deserve to live that life. Work for it, strive for it, but go for it. So that's what I want. My personal mission is to show black women, specifically minority women, that we deserve to live a luxurious life too. Mm -hmm. We deserve to achieve our goals. We deserve to have happy marriages and families or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. We're not the statistics that they told us that we were supposed to be. Do you okay. think that imposter syndrome kind of weighs in on that, right? And I say that coming from the perspective of being from the projects as well mm -hmm. and wow. relocating here to my first place that wasn't my mom's place that was handed down to me because that's what happens in New York. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everyone takes over their parents' yeah. place to renting in my own space, to where I wanted to live, to still having that, oh, but I shouldn't pay this much for this mindset. Or if I do, people are gonna look at me and say I'm spending my money um, immaturely, or, right. you know, like, is it, do you think imposter syndrome or anything like that plays a role into it? Absolutely. A imposter syndrome is a real thing. Yeah. And it happens so much in our society. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you, I'm around 
many races of people all mm -hmm. the time. You never see someone, a white person, a white woman, going into Buckhead shops. Nobody questions, is she living responsibly? Mm -hmm. responsibly? Is right. she spending too much money? And is her credit OK? And mm -hmm. does she really own that car? Mm -hmm. Nobody's questioning that. But when you see a black person, specifically a black woman doing it, all of a sudden is she must have scammed, or mm. she may not be selling what she says she's selling, or mm -hmm. something's wrong with she that. Got a sponsor. She has a sponsor. Mm -hmm. There's no mm -hmm. way she's working that mm -hmm. hard. That one. But that happens so much. Imposter syndrome happens because we don't have representation. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, and my goal is through my social media platforms and getting on these podcasts to say, you have representation. My name is Kiana. Mm -hmm. I am a full <laughs> black woman. I am mm -hmm. not mixed. There is nothing else about me. Mm -hmm. And I am successful, and I'm thriving, and I'm married. Right. And you can have everything. All right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely I love, love it. it. Mm -hmm. I love it. And that's what we're, we're going to get into next, pretty much like that work-life balance. Oh, right? yeah. Powerful black woman on, on a high level, respected, teaching people how to do so much and married. Talk to us a little, about, a little bit about the work-life balance, and we're going to do the same with you. My work-life ba balance has changed. I used to think I could balance it, right? right. I, I used to feel like one, I'm going to balance my personal life and my business life. I've learned to blend. Mm -hmm. gotcha. So when you blend your life, what happens is your work becomes your life. Your mm -hmm. life becomes your work. Right. It blends together, and you're able to cohesively take yourself to that next level because you don't feel like, oh, I, today is my off day. Yeah. Right. Today I woke up. I wrote an offer, I consulted with my team, I consulted with my other team for Agent Tools for Success, and I still got dressed and I met with my husband and went out and now we're here, right? right. You can do all those things. If you, you, there's always a time period, right? But I'm in that time period where I'm going for everything. Right. So you have to blend when you're, when you're building. So let me, let me stop you for a second. So um, sometimes women who either are not married or are married and are in a better financial position than their mate mm -hmm. may feel um, that they have to play second fiddle. They, their husbands or mates may feel intimidated mm -hmm. by the success of um, their partner. Um, when dealing with real estate clients right. or even agents that, that you're training, um, what do you what would you say is your best advice for yeah. women who find themselves in that particular predicament? When you find yourself in that predicament when someone's not respectful of you or respectful that you have a mate, all money isn't good money. Mm -hmm. See, you get poisoned eating off every plate that serves you. Correct. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is you have to one put, it's God first, then mm -hmm. family, then business. That's right. Mm -hmm. So if, you're, if you value your marriage mm -hmm. and you also find ways to incorporate your mate, there are some people that literally never talk about, never post about, they never acknowledge that they even have a mate. Mm -hmm. So if you are not respecting your mate and putting mm -hmm. them on that pedestal, how do you expect strangers to do that? Mm -hmm. So what I started to do is I bring my husband with me now. Mm -hmm. I used to just jump and go do these podcasts, go out, I would go out of town. Right. I would just go because I'm like, I'm on a mission. Right. Because I didn't think he wanted to be a part of it because yeah. at the end of the day, he hears me talk about this all the time. Right. But now that I've learned that even if he's not that interested in hearing the whole thing, he mm -hmm. wants to be a part of it. Absolutely. And that's the, that's the thing. Yeah. It's just like, for me, I feel like sometimes we think that our partner is not interested in what yes. we're doing or it's repetitious. So I, I know the story, you heard all these college stories, I don't wanna hear it again. But there's something about, um, from a man's perspective, there's something about seeing your woman brag um, about what she's doing. Oh yeah. Um, especially if it's fulfilling mm -hmm. her um, and, and she's able to feel empowered by what she does, um, it, it's, it's admirable and I think yeah. it's a certain type of man that appreciates that I don't think every man appreciates that and mm -hmm. I can speak to that because in my last relationship once it went from me in my humble beginnings starving artist grinding to you know winning the show and having to move here and make oh you was on TV now <laughs> a certain, amount, <laughs> certain amount of money mm -hmm. it went from I'm proud of you when I was trying mm -hmm. to when I'm doing and winning to kind of seeming, seeming standoffish and not as supportive and not wanting to be around. And I don't like that type of energy, so I had to let that go. Right. But I think you have to also identify that in a person because 
do you just stick around? And this is for all the women that are super successful and trying to find a guy at this current time and age, in your 30s, and your 40s, do you just stick around and try to make it make sense? Or do you do what's best for you? For me, that's what I had to do. And it's up to each person. But you have to identify that energy. And I identified True. it. I was like, this doesn't seem healthy. Yeah, I'll just add that, you know, finding someone who is secure in themselves. So an insecure person is the most challenging relationship to have. And, and, and an insecure person to work for right. is hard mm. as well. So if you, if you work for someone that's insecure or you have a partnership and that person is insecure or you're <laughs> in a relationship and that person is insecure, it's going to make it really hard for you to try to appease them because really and truthfully it's something internal. Right. You know what I mean? So if a, but if a, if a man's secure, he's going to be elated that his woman makes more money than he does. Right. He's excited about that or she's successful. You know what I mean? And so it takes somebody to be secure. And, and you know, we, we talk about, you know, my degrees in Christian ministries, right? <laughs> and so I, I did a lot of study and everything. And, and we just came from the Christmas, I mean, the Easter holiday. And the, the talk was about, you know, um, you know, shalom peace. You know, shalom mm -hmm. peace is, is really important because it's peace with God, peace within, mm -hmm. and peace with your fellow man. Oh, that's mm -hmm. good. And so that's what it, it boils down to. And, 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 you know, the golden rule is, you know, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then love your neighbor as you love yourself. So mm -hmm. I can't love my neighbor if I don't love me. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's deep. And so it's, like it's, it's tied together. And so this, this whole vertical thing of, you know, loving God and then loving my neighbor, that's where peace comes from. Mm -hmm. And so anyone that's out of place with peace, it means that something's off either here or here. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so that security and that peace comes when you have that fellowship in the right places. Well, know? loving your neighbor as yourself, you know what's funny? I think as a kid when I heard that, I heard it like you love your neighbor equally as you yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you just said it just now, I think I have a different understanding. Oh, yes. It's, it, I would almost replace, if I could, mm -hmm. as, as with while. So I love my neighbor wow. while I'm loving, my, that's yes. I'm loving that's myself. A, that's it. And mm. that's, to me, it seems like that's why self-care is yep. extremely important. It is. Um, being that, you know, we, we've been acquaintances for a while yes. and I've been able to like see you blossom and um, even as you share on social media, I think it's a beautiful blend of your work life, your sense of style. But for, for anyone who has the same sort of um, balance as you, what would you consider some of the best, best like self-care things? What do you oh, do that makes you That's like, good. all right, this is Kiana time. <laughs> what do you do for you? This is Kiana time. I'm going to tell you the best advice my husband gave me is you can't make all the money. <laughs> <laughs> right. When he gave right. me that advice, I, I started to put things into perspective. I have two phones mm -hmm. and every client, I'm a realtor, I tell them I have, even my agents, I have mm -hmm. two phones. I'm going to leave that business line away from me exactly. for a certain number of hours a day, right. even for a full day. Right. And I've hired enough people. So you got to pay for peace. You got to pay Absolutely. in order to love balance and grow. Mm -hmm. And so what I love to do for my self care is when I put the phone to the side, yeah. I guess I'm like, I guess I will consider myself to be a little seasoned and older. I like to sit outside <laughs> and drink my coffee, right. play with my dog, mm -hmm. listen to podcasts. Like I do the boringest things. Mm -hmm. The things that I show on Instagram, it's like, oh, her life is lit. Mm -hmm. But what I really enjoy <laughs> is re really enjoy is that quiet time listening quality. to my podcast, drinking my favorite Starbucks drinks, mm -hmm. playing with my dog and just mm -hmm. Being in a place of peace, right. like moment. not completely made mm -hmm. up, just on mm -hmm. some chill clothes. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not Kiana the agent. I'm not Kiana the realtor. I'm not Kiana right. the businesswoman. Mm -hmm. I'm just Kiana, and That's I'm at it. home, right. and I'm comfortable, and that brings me so much peace. I'll sit outside on my porch for hours, mm -hmm. yeah. and I enjoy that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So going back to the work-life balance piece that y'all were talking about earlier, I love it. I'm, I have to, the, the two phones as well. Yeah. And I've had to learn with my significant other that she is, is just as important as my clients. Mm -hmm. And so what I've, what I've learned, and I'll tell you guys, if you, have, if you haven't read this book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, Man. and you're in a relationship, oh my go gosh. get it, okay? Amazing. Okay. Um, but, you know, he That's talked okay. about in this book, <laughs> he talked about making, making, making um, your, your significant other, your wife, your spouse, making them just as important as your client. And okay. so I, I make sure I save time you know, in that day mm -hmm. to put everything else aside and, and give her mm -hmm. just as much attention and undivided attention 
wow. as I'm giving my client. Because you, know, you know, a lot of times you're you're shutting them out mm -hmm. and you're putting the client first, mm -hmm. and then at the end of the day you have nothing left. Correct. And Ooh. you're giving them what's left over, and they're looking at you like, hey, this not, it's not going to work. Yeah. You know, so I, that's important. Another thing I would say is, if you love what you do. Mm -hmm. and do what you love, mm -hmm. then work-life balance is really easy. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know what I mean? And if you have a, a mate or a spouse that's with you who understands the grind. Right. They understand, you know, the work you're doing. They understand the mental capacity it takes. So some, in, our, in our jobs, we're not running around. We're not, you know, we're lifting weights. We're not, we're not lifting, we're not doing forklift stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of mental Mental's taxation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's happening because you got to deal with every single client is important. Right. Yes. Every single client is I need it right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And every single client says, I got to close it. I got to close it tomorrow. I got to close it the next day. I got to close it <laughs> yes. after that. Do you have everything in place right now? So no, you got so many things. You have employees, <laughs> right? That work. Oh, you my have gosh. employees under me. My mm -hmm. employees call me. They, they, they want me to drop the phone right now. They're like, hey, I need help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you got to make sure you are in, in, in all these places and people know, hey, I respect you. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to respect me as well. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I say, look, I'm busy right now. I will call you back. I would tell my, I would text my clients, say, hey, can we just text instead of talking right now? <laughs> right. You know what right. I mean? Boundaries. Right. It's, it, it's important. It's boundaries so important. Boundaries are healthy. It is. Um, I am the queen of boundaries in processes. Ask any of, any of my agents and in my team, I'm going to put, oh, I saw one thing happen. Let me write down the new process. This is how you contact me. This is the, the hours of operation, and this is what you should expect. On top of that, I'm going to answer that question, not just for this one agent, I'm going to answer it for all 25 agents, so I'm going to go in our back-end database, put the question, put the answer, and now you have it. Mm -hmm. So the more you build that, the more people don't rely on you as much when you have processes and exactly. systems in the back-end. And now when they ask me a question, oh, can you please check the drive account? Mm -hmm. Can you please right log into the Watson Realty Co. Right database? Mm -hmm. And it helps, but that balance to me also comes with having, in my personal opinion, I think as a woman, your man has to be just as ambitious as you. Yes. Exactly. To go back to what you said. Mm -hmm. um, and even in my marriage, we've had it's ebbs and flows, right? Absolutely. I will feel like me and my husband, we're at the peak of the top right now. Mm -hmm. But that comes from conversation and us recognizing and him recognizing, okay, this woman don't want to stop. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> she right. She just don't want right. to stop. But right. then on top of that, bringing him with me, he's mm -hmm. like, he's, it's not what I do, it's the people that I impact that affects him the most, right? right. So last year I had like a, my online training, it was like 300 agents. I did a huge award ceremony. 300 people come to Atlanta. We have yeah. this huge ceremony. And up until that moment, I'm on this Zoom call every week. He's not understanding what's going on in that moment. After that, he said, now I see what you're doing. Yeah. You, you gotta keep going. He said, wow. you are, he was like, these people are growing and they love you and you are giving them what they need, the confidence, the tools, the resources mm -hmm. to be successful. Right. So then that's when he saw it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's not, it's not really what I do because he sees me every day. He's like, this is what she does. Right. But the impact I'm making made him jump on, jump on board. I love that. Speaking, speaking of um, impact, um, I, I just want to give y'all some flowers for a second because okay. what you're doing individually mm -hmm. and since you're both uh, affecting real estate and real estate is the biggest tool for generational wealth. Absolutely. Um, I just want to say thank you all for what you all are doing mm -hmm. to impact our community. Yeah. Now, you're doing a bit more of a grassroots approach, taking what you do on a corporate level and yep. introducing it to the communities, especially in Fayette County and Fayetteville. Right. Um, and you by empowering agents and helping clients or helping people to actually achieve oh, yeah. their goals. So I, what, what would you say is so important about real estate, our communities right. of, of various social economic yes. disparities, right. right? Because some people are just happy to oh, yeah. get an apartment. Some people are looking at a $3.5 million property, Correct. right? It's all the same in the sense of owning something right. and being able to um, pass that on or right. to you know, use the equity to do what else. So um, what would you say it currently is um, the biggest thing that you can impart to people who um, are looking to get into real estate or to buy their first property oh, or to wow. expand? I you have so many stories. Yeah. You wanna, <laughs> I'll, I'll jump you, in you first start. and just say yeah. that. First of all, you know, I want as many people to know. It's like, I'm from New Orleans, right? So gumbo, people always say, making gumbo is so hard. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, it's not hard. You know what I mean? It's really simple. And I cook it gumbo is. and 
You know, so it's like, it's <laughs> not that hard. I did the rule. I didn't bring Come on, man. But once you learn how to make the rule, you're good. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with home ownership. People make it seem like it's so hard to become a homeowner. It really is, it's really is this simple. Pay your bills on time. Mm -hmm. Save some money for your down payment and closing costs. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? Find a, get a good agent, Ms. Ms. Keanu over here, and, and let her find a house for you. And, and we can get the loan approved for you and you get the house. It's that it's simple. It's that simple. It's man. not hard. It's not. I think. Wow. I don't think, <laughs> think it's, it's pieces in between. I don't yeah. think that we think it's hard, right? As a person that is currently in the process, right? And you see, I was encouraging you. <laughs> this. I was like, keep going. Keep, I'll keep going, right? But I don't think it's, it's hard. I think we just don't know. Genuinely don't know. And, and we don't know where to look for it or how. Like, even me throughout the process, there's things going on like, oh, I didn't know. Okay, so what do I need to do next? Oh, I need to do that. We don't really know. And, and also, shame on us for not doing the research on how to do it. But how can we make That's it That's not shame on you, though. Right. Okay. And let me tell you why it's I not shame on you. <laughs> it's not completely shame on you. And I, I can give several examples, right? Like, where I am in my career now, maybe I am working with people with a higher price point. But mm -hmm. that's the reason I have an agency of 25 agents. Right. We work and service every price point. But back six years ago, my first client, let me tell you why home ownership is so important. One of my very first, I like to say, shooting in the gym clients. Yeah, yeah. That's when the Georgia dream, mm -hmm. down payment assistance and all that was available and working to help you acquire a property. Yeah. She bought a four bedroom, two bath, new construction property for $175,000. Wow. She brought $1,000 to the closing table. Mm. Closed on that property and she contacted me last year. Last year, she had 100000 in equity. Mm. Between that time and this time, she started to read books, listen to podcasts. Mm -hmm. She sees my podcast. She's like, oh, let me, you know, she's learning. Mm -hmm. So she contacts me. She says, I want to sell my house. I want to make the money, and I want to invest in these other businesses. Mm. So she went from working as a TSA at the airport to figuring out, I'm worth more than this $12 or $13 wow. an hour they're paying me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She sold her house, made a $100,000 profit, created three businesses, mm. notary business, wow. rented out a space for event planning, and mm. she also teaches people about credit and notary. Mm. And on the side, she wholesales properties. Wow. Right. So she wouldn't have, all she did was buy that house, put $1,000 down, and live in it with her, her children. Mm -hmm. Sold it, made her profits, and now she's investing in business. And what they told her she was worth a year, she's now making that in Look three months. Look at her. So with your chest. when people think about why should I own a home? Because that is how people build wealth. Right. That is the simplest way I can break it down. Mm -hmm. And you have to start looking at yourself as a business. Owning is our birthright. That's when right. you own, you control. Correct. True. She would have never, a bank wasn't just going to give her that money. Right. Yeah. But now that she got $100,000 in the and bank, actually, now she can mm -hmm. leverage that 100000 to get a loan from the bank. Right. Mm -hmm. But we don't think that far because we don't do enough research. And when it comes to you saying you should have questions about buying your, your home buying process, I don't know who your agent is, but I do know it is our responsibility to break down the home buying process. Exactly. You shouldn't be surprised. Mm -hmm. You should know this is what's next. This is what's coming up. You know, I have my agents. We create home buying guides, templates, emails, consultations. All these things happen mm -hmm. in between because I don't want you to be surprised. Right. Right. Like I was on the phone today. I called two of my clients. One was a seller. One was a buyer. One seller, you know why I called her? People always think because you're selling, you shouldn't have an issue. She's nervous. She's selling her first house. Yeah. She's moving out of her first house. So I just called to have a conversation. Mm hmm it wasn't about the house. It was just asking her how she felt. That's the difference. Right. And that's why you even that's why you want to make sure you know the process. You need an agent that cares. Right. To that point, I want to jump in and say, I, I love what you said about we don't know. And so you should know as a leader, I can say I have a title, so I'm not going to you know teach people. But I personally teach first time home buyer seminars every month, mm -hmm. every month on the second Saturday of each month, mm. I'm teaching about first time home buyer or the biggest thing right now, construction of permanent loans. Got to and it. guess what? I make it available free wow. online wow. through WebEx wow. okay. and in person. Wow. So anyone who would like to look, look me up on the Home Loan Guru uh, <laughs> on Instagram and you can see my next class is going to be on, 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 on May 14th, mm -hmm. 10 a.m. in Fayetteville. 
And I'll have it on WebEx. And I'm glad you said that. Yes. Because I'll be having one of the agents of Watson Realty Co. accompany <laughs> And um, I used to do home buying seminars all the time until I'm like, I was like, okay, now I'm managing too many people. But what I found from those home buying seminars, I would, I close deals to this day. People will contact me. Mm -hmm. We have a fiduciary responsibility we to do. share our knowledge we do. and to break this down into layman's terms because I was the first homeowner out my aunt, like my immediate yeah. family. I'm mm -hmm. the first homeowner. That's that's about and to then be. from my, my aunts and my uncles, my my two aunts were the only people that owned property. My parents never owned property. Yeah. And so I wouldn't have known the value of owning property if somebody didn't explain it to me and I didn't get my real estate license. So we got to explain that to other people. Right. It's a but, wealth but, generating vehicle. But what are people dealing with? Like, like, mm. in, in in not so corporate terms, people are experiencing being shut out of the home market, mm -hmm. and there are these companies. Um, I'm I'm not in the game, so I can say these names, but it was like American Homes for Rent and like Divi, and, and I just was reading about it on Reddit, and it was like they are predatorily getting people to mm -hmm. rent houses yeah. instead of so like. Okay, you have you have a yes. development of yes. tiny homes, right? right? And we'll get into that later. But yes. that's amazing. Right. And when you think about like we all drive past these community development signs and they show, you know, a hundred new homes. Right. And you think, oh, they're starting at three fifty or <laughs> wherever, right? <laughs> oh I my think God. I can get one. Mm -mm. Yeah. But these companies are buying them all yes. and then renting them to people Correct. instead of letting them purchase the homes themselves. Can y'all get into that and, mm. and tell people how, and simply how messed up it is? I'll say this, and you know, even my agents work with some of these lease to own companies. If you can buy and not lease to own, you need to buy. And then let me just break it down as a general example. These companies are bringing you into these properties and you're putting down almost the same amount of down payment mm. you would need to purchase a home. Mm -hmm. Then when you get into the property, there you're in a position with the rent increases and also the predetermined increase on the purchase price that mm -hmm. they already have on the contract for five years that it's outpricing you. Mm -hmm. And you think it's the easier route, but it's not. And I think that these companies are targeting you because you don't know the value of home ownership. Mm. And I'm gonna say this, y'all like the shiny new things. I, mm. I do this on my Instagram all the time. Today I posted one of my client's houses, $300,000 house. I get 20 likes. I post a $2.8 million house. <laughs> I get a 15,000 likes mm -hmm. and that's okay but you believe that your first house is supposed to be your forever house. Right. It's supposed to be something that you love forever. Mm -hmm. And your first house should be the property that you purchased to help you build generational wealth. Mm -hmm. And you should know the appreciation values in the area. You should know the market trends of the area so you can use that first house and leverage that to your second or third property. And probably by the second or third property, you'll get what you want. But right. you guys are not thinking that far ahead because that lease to own is the shiny big house. Right. Mm -hmm. And you want that. You don't want the little house. You don't want to drive an hour to the city. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> right. You have to make sacrifices to get where you need to be. Mm -hmm. true. And honestly, these companies are taking advantage of the fact that you're not willing to make the proper sacrifices. Right. So, well, so to that point, <clears throat> she's so right. Tiana, you're so right. And thank you for being so thorough on that point. Oh, yeah. I, think, I think we have a lot of misnomers, you know, uh, when it comes to home ownership versus renting. Yep. You know, when you think about different um, services you purchase every month. Mm -hmm. For instance, a cell phone service. Mm -hmm. No matter how much money you give to a cell phone company, you will never see it again. Right. It's a service you purchase, right? right. Um, whatever those t different services you may be purchasing on a, you know, Netflix or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to a, a, where you live, mm -hmm. how would you like it if you could put money into a home or, you know, the rent, the money you're paying monthly exactly. and then see in a year's time, yeah, having yeah. access to that money again. Right. Mm -hmm. When you're renting, there's no way to get access to that money. It's gone like a service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you when you invest in a, a home, and that's what you're doing, you're investing. Mm -hmm. You're investing in a home in a year's time right now because of um, the inventory shortage mm -hmm. and because of people moving into Atlanta, I'm seeing, and I can, and Keanu can testify, 
We're seeing people's houses appreciate fifty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars in a year. Yeah. Oh no. I don't know. Bananas. And, 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 I'm, <laughs> and I'm being, I'm being, I'm being really on the conservative side. So that's very go ahead. conservative. Talk, talk that's about it. That's way too conservative. Talk about it. I'll talk about one of my clients because one, I couldn't believe they, I couldn't believe they even wanted to sell. Right. I even couldn't believe the fact that we sold it for the price we did. Right. They bought a house a year and a half ago in Marietta. Year and a half ago. I want a year and a half. All right, ago. yo, 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 listen to this. A year and a half. Ago. Year and a half ago. Listen to this one. Four hundred and eighty-nine thousand mm-hmm. dollars. We sold that house a month ago for seven hundred and fifty thousand wow. dollars. Wow. Come on, actually wow. a little above that because mm-hmm. they made a quarter million dollars after paying agent Think fees about it. on their property. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Where can you listen? And all and they half. did was move. They, she did two things. In she moved, moved, in moved, she out. moved into the property. She did get the closet customized. And she lived there with her family. Wow. That's what they did. That's what this couple did. But we overthink it because we don't think. And they lived. That was far. It was like a good hour drive. Mm-hmm. They got tired of the drive and they saw the market was up. Mm-hmm. They got an agent send them market trends because that's what my database does. They're mm-hmm. like, oh, I got some money here. Mm-hmm. I'm ready to cash out and I have a different plan. Right. But we never think about that because we're too busy renting because we want to be in Buckhead and Midtown. Mm-hmm. So I think, and I think that's also, I, I think that also needs to just adjust on based on people that are from here or from the south versus people that are from or or transplants from the north right, right. Mm-hmm. so for like my, for instance for people that are from new york city it's so hard to even be able to rent mm-hmm. i know in new york mm-hmm. so the mindset and the thought of being able to own your own place isn't something that even <laughs> yeah you cannot reach that with a 10-foot stick yeah. <laughs> you right. know but coming here and just seeing how many people actually own, right? Exactly. Um, and, and have the opportunity to invest and, and flip and all these different things, it opens your mind to, oh, snap, I can actually do these things. Three years in, I was like, I don't want to pay rent anymore. Correct. You know, this is stupid. Mm-hmm. But ask me three years ago in New York City, I'm like, can I get a place? Correct. Can I rent, sir, please? Like, mm-hmm. You know, so I think that plays a role in just who's deciding what as far as where they're living mm-hmm. when they um, when they're choosing between like for me midtown buckhead because it reminds me of home it reminds right. me of new york city i'm also a single woman i'm not going that far i'm scared and the thing <laughs> about it is you don't have to but then maybe you're not going to get the penthouse mm-hmm. at exactly. this huge place because no that that penthouse exactly. is eight million dollars exactly. i know i know you like it but that's not it right. so you're going to get a condo yeah. You're going to get a condo in a building that you feel safe and secure, but also the area that's appreciated and it makes sense for your lifestyle. And that's right. what I'm at right now, sis. See? There you go. Because so, so <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. That, what, I so so the mindset, about. and I think exactly. it's all because I'm around amazing people like both of you, right? Thank you. That just constantly pour and feed into me. I'm always in, at the gathering spot, always a thousand people talking, all this positive and greatness, especially Chris, into I me. It. And I, I learned quickly. I was like, okay, well, I can get this place. Don't like the number. But I can get this place because I can actually afford it. Mm-hmm. And in two, three years, if I want to, I already know I'm good. Exactly. <laughs> yes, I, I love what you said, though. She said, you can have it all. You can. Mm. You can have it all. Now, it's going to cost you something, though. Right. It's going to cost you a little bit of patience. <laughs> it's going to cost you a little bit of humility. Yes. It's going to cost you a little bit of saying, I do not know. Mm-hmm. Being honest, say, hey, I don't know the answer. Mm-hmm. Teach me. Right. Correct. It's, it's going it's to cost you being able to sit down and say, hey, teach me what I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, I love the, the, the whole fact that you say a mindset shift, and that's what it's all about. Really and truthfully, it's about a paradigm shift. Agreed. You know, getting people to, to change their consciousness and see it a different way. Yeah, and so we're, we're impacting this one person at a time. You know, Ameris's mission is, you know, providing financial peace of mind mm-hmm. to our community one customer at a time. And so it's really a one customer, a person to person interaction helping people to change that mindset because really and truthfully, think about it, if that same client of hers would have done the least to own route in, 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 in one and a half years, she wouldn't have um, gotten $250,000. Oh, no. She would have still be paying in that exactly. lease to own, and that, that, that lease to own company would be t- saying to her, we'll tell you when it's time for you to buy. Right. You and, know what I mean? And, and so think about that. And I can tell you this, and I always play devil's advocate here, and this is also because I'm just – I'm always looking at it from the other end. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we make decisions that we know aren't right, even though people can prey on us all the time. But it's our responsibility to educate ourselves. 
we are in a technologically driven world right now. Anything you want to know, you can Google. You can know it. Anything yeah. you want to learn, you can find the basics on YouTube. You can follow a hashtag on Instagram. You can join free Facebook groups. Right. There are free groups. Like, there are resources that are free to us. So sometimes it's about us saying, I'm not going to take the easy route. I'm going to have to learn yep. why I want home ownership to be important to me. Mm -hmm. And then let me ask an expert about it and then make the decision to make the hard decision of maybe I can't get this 3,000 square foot house for right. 24, 2,000 a month because they want to rent to own. Maybe I can qualify for a 1,900 square foot house. Yep. Maybe it's a little further outside of the city, but this is a better decision mm -hmm. for me and my family. We yeah. choose every day. Sometimes it's predatory, right. but some of it is really us. And I think that we have to get out of that mindset of everything that's shiny and pretty and big yep. yes. is best for us in that moment. Yes. You, everybody has had to sacrifice. I remember when I first came to Atlanta, I sacrificed so hard and I was still helping my family because I was still technically the one that made it, right. but still didn't really, wasn't really making it. <laughs> right. And um, the sacrifices I've made to get to where I am exactly. when it comes to like, working like working all the time like i was working in leasing and working like when they they let us off at six you can leave at six or you can stay later they weren't paying more i would stay till eight right See? i got promoted in six months See? from a leasing consulting to a marketing manager from marketing manager to assistant manager six months after that six months after that i was a property manager do you know why i didn't do the least mm -hmm. i did the most because right. i knew i wanted to get out of that <laughs> i didn't and i, I do it. i live my life like that i, I do it. the most so we have that. to do the most with our this lives. Is good. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question and just kind of mm -hmm. shift a little bit. So speaking of people wanting the big shiny things. Oh yeah. Speaking of doing the most. Social media. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Reality TV. Oh yes. <laughs> Want to talk about it? Let's talk about it. I, so. We are addicts in America to Ooh, yeah. drama, yep. to things that are not really our business. Mm. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. It was chess. Preach it. We, we see things that are public and popular mm -hmm. and feel that we have the right to assume, assert, Anything that begins with ass, kind of. Yeah, right? all, all, all of those words. Right? All of those words. Um, our opinions <laughs> being now a public figure. Right. And in your world, a very public figure, especially being community management, a community development manager for one of the largest banks in the country and in the southeast. How do you deal with the public's uh, assumed right to, <laughs> to know your business and oh, um, I know you typically have to be kind of cordial when you're dealing with mm -hmm. your public but but now we're in uncorked <laughs> conversation That's right. That's right. so, oh, so, so oh, you don't have to be so true. cordial Sip swan. Oh, goodness. Mm. uncorked I think you're gonna have to pour some more wine okay I need oh, my wine. Got you. oh my god <laughs> I can tell you this and Go this ahead. is something I don't mind saying I think that we we misconstrue what is considered to be 15 second highlight reels mm -hmm. mm. and pretty photos of highlights of other people's lives mm -hmm. to be the full picture. Right. right. And I think that in my personal opinion, if you spend as much time researching another person, yeah. what they may or may not have, what they did or did not do, and you took that same energy and research how you can make yourself better, <laughs> right. a better woman, a better man, a better person, a better right. business person, mm. a better wife, a better friend, a better daughter, whatever, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we will be so much further. Correct. Because, because I invite you with my carefully curated <laughs> feet, um, and specifically placed content mm -hmm. does not entitle you to know everything about my life. It Correct. is really none of your business. Right. And I think that that's where we get things messed up. We'll never know what happened with Beyonce and Jay-Z in the elevator, right? Right. It's none of your damn business. <laughs> right. Right. And when you know. say that, people are like, oh, my God, no, it really isn't any of your business. We're here to highlight things that we feel like are important to us 
that we choose to share with our audience, true. not what you think I should share with my it's audience. It's true. And um, I even had to tell someone that. They were like, oh, you share everything. I said, well, what do, I, what do you know about me? You know nothing. Do you know how many brothers and sisters I have? Because I don't share my family on this page. Right. Exactly, you don't. Right. Do you know what I do every Sunday? Do you know that I see my mom twice a week? All you guys see is a highlight reel. Right. But I'm protective of them, which is why I don't put them on this platform. So right. even when it comes to things about my personal life and my marriage, I'm not showing you if me and my husband is laid up in the bed. That's not, no, you're going to see us on the way out to dinner. We're going to take a picture. <laughs> right. Might give you a little video. And that's it. <laughs> yeah. If you want to know more, Go find you your own man and your own husband, <laughs> right. and then you can highlight it on your own page. Right. See, I tell people stuff like that, and they're like, oh, yeah, well, that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. I think that that sense of entitlement is just so, it's too high. Mm -hmm. right. And we have to stop feeling like we have to expect that people are supposed to give us things, like their personal life. That's true. Right? Yeah. Like, that's we, can, true. we have the right to protect the people that we love the most, right? And For that's sure. our family. For sure. And that's our loved ones. That's yeah. our spouses. Yeah. That's yourself. Actually, that's you. Yeah. I get to the point where I even want to protect me. Yeah, it's true. You have to be protective <laughs> of you and your thoughts and how you feel about things. So I think that we got to look at social media for what it is mm -hmm. and be inspired from the pieces that you get. Mm -hmm. But like, don't go down a rabbit hole, baby. At like, all. I have had people go down a rabbit hole. You know, like when you Google your name. So I go, I yes. do, yes. I yes. Google oh, my goodness. name. There we go. I Google my name once a month. Mm -hmm. I do it too. And, I, and, to, I, and, I, and to. I'm like, oh my God. Like, yeah. so I always, part, the, 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 the best quote I always say is the moment that you respond to people, they mm -hmm. win. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when they, there are blogs telling you your life and you're like, that is not true. Like, let me, say like you're telling you. it wrong. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you the <laughs> truth. <laughs> you, I, I really sometimes like, let yeah. me just tell you what really happened. But then I've learned that that energy that I spend there is it. that energy focusing on what I would say would probably be 25% of the negative right. that I'm not even acknowledging the 75% of people that are giving me positive exactly. messages, positive DMs, long emails. So mm -hmm. what I've started to do now is when I see negative things, Every once in a while, because I'm a Libra, and I'm not, if my scale's not <laughs> balanced, yeah. I can, my nickname sometimes is Petty LaBelle, honey. Like, <laughs> I, can, <laughs> I, can, I can take it and I can dish it. Right. But for the most part, I focus on the positive. I like but that. I'm going to, I don't like people playing with me. Yeah. Mm. I don't know how no better. Respect. My mom even told me that. Respect. She said, That's as right. a child, I was the same way. I had two same teachers. Here. I didn't like one teacher. <laughs> we had these Valentine's Day cards, and I told her I did not want to make Miss Such and Such a card because I did not like her. My mom told me that. She told me that story like a year ago, and she was mm -hmm. like, you've always been like that. Like, you stand up for yourself. Mm -hmm. I think there's a way to stand up for yourself for and sure. just to create boundaries. So what I na now say is if people ask me things that I feel like are none of their business, mm -hmm. I literally say, it's none of your business. Right. right. That's a full sentence. That's I don't right. have to explain. Can what? you tell me, <laughs> well, tell everyone about... Um, on social media, someone, someone. Oh yeah, we can talk about that. Okay, so I was on this. I love your response. Yes, okay, so I was yes. on this reality show and I talked about my fertility journey. And, you know, after trying reality TV one, I, we had, that's a whole nother conversation, uh -huh. but uh -huh. by wow. opening that door, I recognized that, you know what? I don't feel comfortable with people being in that space with me, yep. right? Yep. It makes me uncomfortable that you feel like you know so much about my personal business, so I'm no longer going to share this part with you. Gotcha. Even if I was six months pregnant right now and drinking grapefruit juice, mm -hmm. it's none of your business, mm -hmm. right? So someone wrote on my page like, oh, do we see a baby bump? And now there's like a bunch of comments. We see a baby bump. Oh, well, take, take this yoni oil, drink these berries, take a macaroon. All these unsolicited Goodness opinions. Gracious. And so I decided, you know what? I just pinned the comment to the top and I said, I think it's time for people to mind their own uterus. Right. <laughs> and I mean that with all of my soul. You think you're being helpful, but what if I was really struggling with fertility and in that hard, True. that very dark space? You mm -hmm. saying those things could cause me True. to slip my wrist or mm -hmm. right. you know, go into a really deep depression. Yeah. But for me, luckily, I'm not in that space. Yeah. So, but, but but whatever space I'm in, it's none of your what business, <laughs> yeah, right? And that's where mind I that's uterus. how I do it. And I, right. I just tell people to mind their uterus. And mm -hmm. by saying that, someone said you're being rude. No, you're being rude. You're mm -hmm. on my platform, exactly. on my page, trying to tell me about myself. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, I know that you have a voice, mm 
-hmm. And your voice is respected, right? Freedom of speech. Right. But you're going to take your freedom of speech to, to your, your page right. and your audience. Well, people also have unrealistic expectations of people when they have had the, that opportunity to be on a show, right? Oh, yeah. You see the highlight reels. You see everything that's going on. You expect people to be 100% this person all the time that you saw on an edited TV show. Mm -hmm. It's quite frustrating. I had someone slide in my DMs <laughs> and told me that, um, gave me a whole paragraph. I supported you. I watched you on the show. I rooted for you. And you should smile more. You didn't even <laughs> say hi when you walked past oh me God. at the Trap Music Museum. Wow. And then I said, and I was like, I remember that day because I really did have, an, I was really upset. Mm -hmm. I said, my apologies. And this is, this is what I like to do. It's like, as per my last email type of stuff. Mm -hmm. I said, my apologies. But a friend of mine just told me she was at the door and one of her relatives just passed away and she wanted to come to the Trap Music Museum and have a drink with me. So mm -hmm. I beelined it out the museum. But next time I'll make sure that I pause to say hi to you and mm -hmm. not focus on my close friend. Mm -hmm. Oh my and God. And she was like, oh my bad. People have unrealistic expectations. And when you talk about comments, I purposely didn't read any because it just didn't make any sense for me mm -hmm. to do that oh, because yeah. I, your negative energy, the hate you have in your life and in your spirit oh, has yeah. nothing to do with me and my lifestyle and where I'm going. So Absolutely. kudos to you. Continue yes. to do that because I think every once in a while, this is what I like to do. That's why I pinned the comment to the top. Pinned it to and the top. I'm right. never going to do it. Right. <laughs> every once in a while, you just got to check them. Right. Like, you do. And I just like, like <laughs> I can live my whole, I can in have 50 comments in, the, uh, in three weeks that I'm ignore. Mm -hmm. but, it, but it might be just one that time, one. once yeah. a month. And by doing that and highlighting that, it kind of teaches people, you know what? I think, let me watch my mouth with her. Right. And, I, and people say, oh, you're taking away from your life. I'm like, oh, no, I didn't. It took me two seconds two to write seconds that. Right there. Phone, put the phone down. And I was having cocktails with my husband laughing. Mm -hmm. He didn't even really, he, I didn't even discuss it with him. Right. He didn't even know what happened. Right. I'm just like, oh, I said that. Oh, that was so good. Yeah, let, me, so let me speak to the mm -hmm. same thing. Luckily for me, Kiana, I'm, I work for a public entity. I'm an officer of the bank. Mm -hmm. So I have to be very careful mm -hmm. with what I post, uh, right? Yeah. Oh, and yeah. so being on the on the business side at first, I could hide in LinkedIn world. Right. So I was oh, Mr. Yeah. LinkedIn. I, was, yeah. I didn't have any Facebook. I didn't have any Instagram. I had it about 10 years ago and got off. Yeah. And, I, just, and, and I was like, because I, I started realizing people were dropping like flies because of these different things they posted yeah. innocently and, mm, you know, they lose yeah. a job. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, so I'm like, I need to keep myself safe on LinkedIn. I can keep myself safe and just post business stuff. Right. Well, you know, fast forward into this mortgage world, like now you got to get on everything. Yeah. Yes. I'm like, oh my God. So I, I was so nervous about getting on everything, but I yeah. finally got on everything. Yeah. I and, see. and then <laughs> next thing you know, you know, women started DMing me, right? Oh, they, they started, you know, hitting me up, you know, and oh, they so say it goes so, down in the DM. I was like, oh God. I said, so here we go. I said, all right, I, I have to make one public post. Need that loan. So I posted me and my lady, and I said, look, this is my business page, but. I am in love with this queen right here. Right. And that was it. Right. The funniest thing, though, is on my LinkedIn, mm -hmm. that was the most views I've ever had, 12,000 views. Right. <laughs> it was like, oh, my God, what's happening? Right. But I, I made that one public post to do that. Mm -hmm. And then I, what I also learned is another little neat trick for you guys out there that's happened to um, when, when women inbox me now, I just, I just say, hey, this is Brandon's assistant. Um, for American <laughs> Bank. But it really be planning. Just so y'all know now, it really be planning. How many, how many I see with your home loan needs? But you know what, I, I, I have a question. I have a <laughs> that question is for hilarious Brandon. to me. It's, I like it, that. It's, it's super important. I want to ask you Yes, question. yes. Um, <laughs> we're, we're in the state of Georgia, and I just drove my son to um, Savannah this weekend to check out Savannah State. And um, coming back on Route 16 West, I saw a Confederate flag, a Georgia state flag, and an American flag. And it was like, join now. Wow. And so when I think about Ameris Bank, um, and I think about the community work that you're doing in mm -hmm. communities that are majority white, but also you're focusing on helping us in those communities to grow, to thrive, and to get into homes so that we can kind of bridge the wealth gap. Mm -hmm. How difficult is it to deal with uh, white counterparts mm -hmm. who, because of your status at the bank, assume that you are not connected mm -hmm. intrinsically Mm -hmm. to the community that you serve. Right. How, how do you deal with them expecting you to code switch mm -hmm. and to be somebody else that really wants to be like them? 
I can I can tell you this, and, and I, I I I really wouldn't want to share it too publicly, but mm -hmm. I have to. The CEO of my bank mm -hmm. is a gentleman named Palmer Proctor. Mm -hmm. He is is um, one of the people that really mentored me and brought me in. Yeah. Um, he he invited me to the Beloved Benefit. Beloved Benefit is put on by yeah. you know um, uh, Arthur Blank, Dan Cathy, yep. Rodney Buller, who serves, serves on our board. Yeah. I. This is this one. This one of the first times I really got to meet him up close and personal. Personal. Yeah. Went there with his family. His wife was there. I saw how many African American people he knew mm -hmm. personally. Mm -hmm. And then, fast forward, learned the story that his of his grandfather, mm -hmm. who um, a gentleman named Leroy Collins, who was the governor of Florida, mm -hmm. who um, really and truthfully helped to integrate Florida. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. And also marched alongside of Dr. King mm -hmm. and lost the Senate because of that. Mm -hmm. And he was raised by a man mm -hmm. that taught him that everybody's the same. Mm -hmm. And so I can honestly say that it's a pleasure for me to work with people mm -hmm. like Palmer mm -hmm. who sees me mm -hmm. as a regular person. Mm -hmm. Where his wife Holly's, you know, she 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 told us about being Indian and you know having that heritage and mm -hmm. people thinking that you know she was her kid's nanny. Mm. She's like you know, mm -hmm. wow. and I was like wow. And here she is, of course, doing well and mm -hmm. you know, so they, they they deal with this on their level as well. Mm -hmm. Correct. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. not just it's not just you know, one sided. So for me, it's it's a pleasure to know that you work with people who get it. Mm -hmm. You know, we actually have a diversity and inclusion mm -hmm. you know division. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, the lady I'm in love with, she works for our bank as well, oh, and so she's, she she's the EI coordinator for the right, bank. So we have a diversity task force. Right. Okay. Wait you know what I mean? You guys and so we, we are big <laughs> on, we, we have a, 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 a task force that, that deals with, you know, um, everything from, you know, we have a BIPOC group called The Place. Mm -hmm. You know, that's an African-American uh, ERG, or, uh, employee uh, resource group. Mm -hmm. We have, you know... Um, Gen United for, you know, those who are older and younger trying to come together. We have a veterans group. Mm -hmm. We have LGBTQ pride and allies group. Mm -hmm. So we're big on inclusion. Mm -hmm. The whole thing from our bank, as a bank, we're saying we want everybody to be our client. We don't want, mm -hmm. we, we want to be like Amazon. We don't want you to say, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a black bank or a white bank. Mm -hmm. This is a bank for everybody. Correct. You know what I mean? And so when you look at us and, and, and our mortgage team, everybody's together. Yeah. You know, everybody's pushing for the same cause. I, I can tell you, when I went to look for our um, first time home by a seminar, mm -hmm. I had someone, one of my white counterparts had already had a PowerPoint deck for it mm. to, that they had been teaching right. to everybody. Right. You know what I mean? So this is something that's ingrained in us. We're not, mm -hmm. we're not separating people. We're not looking at anybody different, uh, 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 picking winners or losers. Mm -hmm. We are trying to treat everybody the same way mm -hmm. because we have a, a commitment to be an equal housing lender, Correct. a fair housing lender, mm -hmm. and give everybody an equal shot at home ownership. So for me, it's, it's, it's a joyful, and guess what? Brandon, wear your beard. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, wear your high curly hair. Hey, mm -hmm. man, you with your dark skin. Mm -hmm. Get out there and, and, and show the world who you are. Be you. Mm -hmm. I love and so I don't have to diminish myself. I don't have to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, change the way I look at my appearance to, to, to represent the bank. They put me in this role right. knowing who I am, right. fully who I am. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and endorse me and push me forward and give me the resources to be effective. So for someone who's um, in college right now mm -hmm. and has their whole life ahead of them, what, what um, they're interested in real estate, they're interested in um, finance, what advice would you give them to kind of follow your, your path? I would tell everybody this, and hear me out on this. Here's a quote for you to write down. This is a Brandon Sherman quote. Life is the ability to become that which has not been. Therefore, I am becoming. I'll say it again. Life is the ability to become that which has not been. Therefore, I am becoming. What am I becoming? I'm becoming who I, who's never been. The world's never seen another me. No one has my unique fingerprint. No one has my, my, my style, my, my swag. No one has it. It's the ability to become who I'm becoming. Right. And I'm becoming something the world has never seen before. There's never going to be another Keanu Watson, right? Never, never another, you know, Chris Classic, you know, Miss, Miss Crystal. Never another one. And so become it. And if, you, if your desire is to do it in finance, you can do it. You know, this, this really, you're going to have to go the road less traveled. Oh, yeah. 
you're going to have to go the road less traveled. It's not going to be fun. It's not going to be popular. No one's going to stand on the side of the road and applaud you. It's going to be a lot of hard work. It's going to be some late nights studying. It's going to be some early mornings, getting up early. It's going to be doing some grunt work you may not want to do. But you go, you go to road less traveled, and guess what? You may not get there quickly, but when you get there, you'll be, you'll be surely established, and no one can take it from you. That's right. Let's take it a step further, right? Right, as we're winding down mm -hmm, our mm -hmm. conversation. Real estate, right? What about those who are at the door when they're, they're ready, they're ready to get started? What, is, what, what advice do you have for those about the current market, trends, research? Like, what advice do you have someone that's, like, right there itching to leave that renter lifestyle and head into purchasing their first piece of real estate? I want them to, if you're going to purchase your first piece of real estate, understand that you're buying this for you and your financial future. But let's get rid of the myth of I'm just going to automatically get some free money from the government as a first time right. home buyer right. because I'm a first time home buyer mm -hmm. and they're going to just give it to me because that's just not true. Our market across the country, we saw 14% increases in value across the country. Now let's talk about Atlanta. Atlanta grew 18% when it came to home appreciation values. Mm -hmm. And most recently, February, our average price point was 450,000. Um, so to speak, right now, today, in <laughs> the average price point is 478,000 right. in a month. Right. You gotta be prepared to have your own money saved, be competitive, trust your realtor, Look at the market data. Like, don't just trust what your real estate says. I, even I've been in the game. I feel like, oh, I'm Keanu. No, I don't. I earn everybody's business. Let me show you the market reports. Let me show you the market data. Let me give you my pricing recommendation and also explain to you why this area, I feel like, is the best area for you based on what you told me you wanted, right? Got to be clear about that. That's right. Based on what you told me. Because <laughs> we will not be steering anyone. Um, and be mindful that you're going to lose a couple of offers. If you're shopping anywhere near that average price point, you're gonna lose a couple of offers, but what's for you is for you and don't be discouraged. And start looking at areas I like to call location adjacent. <laughs> I, know the, I know the city of Atlanta like the back of my hand. So I'm like, let's look at a location adjacent to that. Might add 10 minutes to your commute, but may give you what you're looking for. So all of these things is what I wanna give you guys and just stay encouraged and get off of the internet. The internet is telling y'all that we're going to experience whatever happened in 2008, 2009. Right. You're waiting for a market crash, not recognizing of quite a few things. And I want to tell you this, these three things. One, I got my real estate license in 2007. The market started to crash in 2008. It plummeted in 2009. That's because we had over four and a half months of inventory in the metro Atlanta market. Right, right now, to this day, that means that we had so much inventory that there were more inventory than there were buyers. Right now we have one month of inventory. We are in a seller's market. There are more buyers than there are sellers. And if you look down the rabbit hole because of the shortage in lumber supply, we are so far behind the curve in building new property mm. that we won't catch up for 22 years and you can Google that. That's true. So because of this information, there won't be a market crash. And when there are some foreclosed homes, you will have to have cash money on the courtroom steps to qualify. You can't go over here and get you an FHA loan <laughs> or a conventional loan. So you're waiting for something that you can't take advantage of because you're a first time buyer. You have your down payment and your closing costs. You may not have $300,000 cash to win a bid on the courtroom steps. So all these myths are what's keeping you back. They're holding you back. Mm. Focusing your reality. The reality is we're in a seller's market you need to purchase a property before you're outpriced so you can leverage the equity of that property to your next property. Buy a home. Your first home is not your forever home. And get you a good team of people, a good mortgage loan officer to explain everything about the financing process. Get you a good realtor to explain everything about the home buying process. And just go for it. Stop listening to your sister, uncle, Right. And all the other people <laughs> right. telling you we're back in 2010. Right. I bought a house in Atlanta, seven to eight bedroom for 150000 It never happened again. Child. Because, and I'm, and I'm speaking specifically for Atlanta because there are other markets that may slow down. Atlanta will not slow down. We have Google 
We have Microsoft. That's we right. have Microsoft expanding here. We have large corporations that are creating their homes here because we're more affordable than Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. even though to you we're not. And guess what that brings? That brings jobs. So now you're competing with engineers and these people making half a million dollars a year to create apps. And to them, a million dollar house is cheap. Mm -hmm. I work with clients that are relocating and implanting from New York. And they're like, a million? Where do I sign? That's cash. They pay cash. Meanwhile, you're still focused on the old Atlanta or the old whatever state you're mm -hmm. in. Get abreast of the new trends. Yep. Yep. Focus on where you are now. You can't you, you can't focus on what happened then. You can't take advantage of that. But you can take advantage of where you are now and know that home ownership is the best vehicle for building generational wealth. Buy you a property. Buy you some land and focus on what you want to do. I love That's it. my life. I love it. And I, I would second that. She, she, uh, Kiana said it so beautifully. Um, I would tell people, right now, is a, there's no better time. Rates are going up. Rates are going up. I have a client. I'll give you an example. I had a client who, we have a process called Decision Now. And what Decision Now is, is where if you, when you apply for a loan with us, and we pre-qualify you, and we say, you know what, give us your last two years tax returns. Give us your last in 60 days, um, 30 days of pay stubs. Give us your last 60 days bank statements, okay? Give us your driver's license. And from there, we can get an underwriter approval, okay? And with that decision now approval, once Ms. Kiana and her team comes back, or another real estate agent comes back with the team and come back with an offer on a house, we can close in 15 business days. That's powerful, right? Close in 15 business days, of course. And so, and so I had a client who was ready for that. And December, rates were like low threes, high twos. And for whatever reason, held off on buying a house. And now here we are and rates are high fours, low fives, low fours, mid fives. And so it depends on your credit. And so that's the time value of money. Now because I didn't act now, act at the time when it was lower, I'm gonna lose money for that same loan. And so guess what? Rates are, are supposed to go up a, a couple more times yep. before this year's out. Exactly. Because they're trying to bring inflation down. Yep. So guess what? It's no better time to buy than right now. Yep. Get the loan right now. Lock in now, you know, because you, you're going to save money by doing so. Yep. You know, so I tell everybody, we have all the tools you need. You know, I, I, I offer these first-time home buyer seminars. I offer free consultation, no matter what my title is. For me, everybody's a 10. It doesn't matter who you are, if you're a millionaire or, or a thousandaire. I treat everybody as a 10, you know, so I'm going to answer my phone. I'm going to talk with you myself. I'm not going to dish you off to my teammate or someone that works for me. If you call me, I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to help you. And I had one client recently that I closed, but he was blown away that, you know, it's like, man, I can't believe with your title, you were the guy helping me to get the loan closed. I'm like, you're important. It's, that's why, you know, so that's how I believe. And it's really and truthfully how we believe. And it's really about providing that, you know, financial peace of mind to our community, one customer at a time. And that's how you build anything. It's one person at a time. It's person to person. You know, so we, we really do care. Yeah. Absolutely love it. I think both of you have really just touched on things that so many people want to hear about in an uncorked way. One, one last question I'll ask, and I know Chris brought this up as something we should ask. What is your favorite thing to uncork? Wait a minute. Hold on. I need to say something real quick. First of all, my man, Eric. Oh, yeah. Eric on point. Eric. Eric. These smoked old fashions that you've been giving me are Smoked Patron amazing. and Yale old fashions. Oh, thank you very much. It's <laughs> Patron old fashions or uh, the Patron and Yale? Yep, it's okay. the Yale. All right, it's got it. Patron. And it's um, tattooed right here. <laughs> Eric is like an amazing, uh, he's a wine song, level two. Uh, the uh, director, beverage director at the Gathering Spot, uh, works with Gentleman Jack. He's amazing. Drink salad. Yes. Drink salad. Awesome you know, just um, where can people find your podcast? Because absolutely, people need to to, to get with you and okay. to, to hear what you have to say about something that they need. Well, that's why I was gonna let them uncork and then. Okay. We okay. okay. Sorry. 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 <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Her question was. Out. Her question was. <laughs> what is your favorite thing to uncork? This is actually something you brought up on the call. Uh, your favorite thing to uncork, whether it's a bottle of wine, what kind of wine, whether it's a bottle of tequila, things like so that. So for me, it's going to be either a Moscato or a Pinot Grigio okay. is my little chill drink. So I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a bitter okay. palate person, so okay. you got to be like sweet or in the middle for me to drink okay. something like that. I 
I've um I've expanded my palette quite a bit. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um I love me a Camus, but the classic Camus or yep. Opus One. Okay. Um so um, okay. either or. <laughs> okay. Closing talk. Hello. Mm -hmm. I either or are those are my favorite drinks to uncork. They're just so smooth and mm -hmm. it just you know. Gets mm -hmm. me in that chill, relaxing mood. So. We're chill, we're relaxed, we yes. had a great conversation, and now we can go into how can people support you? How sure. can they subscribe to your podcast, Absolutely. subscribe to your social media, book you for a consultation, or All whatever. of those things. <laughs> um, so for me, um, it's easy to find. Everything to find about me is KianaWatson.com. <laughs> Q U I A N A W A T S O N. So it's Kiana Watson, Kiana Watson on social media, Instagram, across all platforms. I do have our real estate podcast, Rants and Gems. If you're interested in investing, if you are a first time buyer, first time seller, if you are a realtor, we always interview people that we feel like will help you. We do the building blocks to home ownership. We teach you about what it takes to sell your first property. We interview top performing agents and other people and loan officers mm -hmm. so you have all this plethora of information waiting for you on our podcast so check us out it's rants and gems and if you want to find us on youtube you'll see our episodes under the earn your leisure let network that we are signed on mm -hmm. then i also have my online training it's it is actually agent tools for success so i feel like everybody started to give me motivation nobody gave me any tools or resources when i wanted to be a top performing agent yep. so when i started to operate at a high level i said i don't want to be the only one up here I don't need to be the only person at the top. Let me give people real resources. So Agent Tools for Success gives you the resources to be a top producing agent. And our agents are going from 30,000 a year to six figures after taking our training. So I would certainly say check that out. And then if you want to be a part of a dynamic membership, I created this membership called CEO Society with my business partners. Check us out there. It's, it's join CEO Society on Instagram and it's activateceosociety.com. And what we do is we have someone in there teaching branding and development with the Ronnie Brown. I have Tiffany Latoy. She teaches us all about government contracting and representing the government. So for me, I'm focusing on my business representing the government to buy commercial properties. She's gotten me certified. So those are things that you'll learn and as well as I teach a real estate portion, but I only teach agent to agent, business to business in there. So I'm giving you advice, ideas, and teachings about being a top producing, top performing agent. So that's pretty much the whole gist. However, anyone looking to buy or sell a home, reach out to WatsonRealtyCo.com. That's WatsonRealtyCo.com. We have 25 able, ready, and qualified agents to service you throughout the metro Atlanta area, and they will sit down with you. They'll explain the process. They'll give you a home buying consultation, a home selling consultation, and make sure they service you with excellence, which is our specialty. Love it. It's Love amazing. it. Love and it. shout out to the Earn Your Leisure Cats and uh, Brother Ian. Um, oh, Brother Ian, they over there in Houston yeah. right now. Got it. That's, <laughs> there are amazing resources that were not available when I was becoming an adult um, that are available now oh, yeah. for people to um, be financially literate yeah. and to learn about the process in all aspects, investing, real Just estate, everything. With, everything. And when I'll people give ask me about mm -hmm. like, what started to change with me, I only was like, I only want to sell real estate. I never wanted to do anything else. Mm -hmm. Then when I started saying yes to other opportunities, saying yes to doing this podcast and joining the Earn Your Leisure Network changed my life because now I have a network of people. Mm -hmm. Even when I live to this hiding home community, right? Yeah. We sold out because I was able to use my network to sell this out. Right. Mm -hmm. And I have a network of people where I can call and say, what stock should I invest in? Mm -hmm. What should I do with this money? Mm -hmm. should, I, should I use this platform for my training classes? Mm -hmm. Your network truly determines your net worth, mm -hmm. and we have to start getting in the room more. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Um, and that's just not just with earning your leisure. This is period. Yeah. You have to start getting in the room and paying for proximity, mm -hmm. because that proximity will take you places that Google cannot. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'll share mine. Um, I am in good stuff, Kiana. Um, you can find me on Instagram um, at the Home Loan Guru. Um, that's my handle there, and also on Facebook at the Home Loan Guru or branded the Home Loan Guru on Facebook. Um, you can find me also on LinkedIn because that's my home base. <laughs> Just Brandon S. Sherman. You know he's loving up there. Love that LinkedIn. <laughs> hi, not saying hi. LinkedIn just looks like Instagram. Exactly. Which is I, I, I can't hide there anymore. And you can also Google me. You can Google Ameris Bank forward slash Brandon Sherman. I have my own page that comes up. And it's easy for you to apply with me right there. So you can just click apply now. 
and it takes you right to a secure link. You can apply with me right there, and, and it comes right to me, and it's secure, and you can upload documents right through it. So really easy to find me. I'm, I'm very accessible. I like that about you. Mm -hmm. Like, I really do. Like, I'm definitely going to bring you into Watch Mode Co. and see how we can see some business. Oh, Y'all heard, 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 heard it first here. Y'all heard it. heard it first here. Thank you. I absolutely I'm love it. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. It's network equals your net worth. That's it. We done created a dynamic duo over That's, here. Y'all seeing it now. Y'all seeing it happen right here first. Yes. Thank you so much for sitting down and chatting with us. We yeah. had a really good conversation. I know I've learned a lot. I'm excited. I'm about to be a homeowner. Yes. <laughs> you're going right. to stick to it. You're going to stick, stick to it. I love it. I'm a little nervous, sweating. But you got it. You got, you got it. This. You got we'll get through you. it, and we hope that everyone that tunes in has the opportunity to really learn something and figure out what they need to do next and what they want to do with closing that wealth gap and building generational wealth. Again, I'm Crystal Garner, also known as KG. I'm KG. Chris Classic, and uh, on behalf of BMW of South Atlanta and Fellowship ATL, we want to thank you, thank you, and thank you for joining us on Uncorked Conversations. Cheers. 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 <laughs>